minutes ago, it was hard to hear, but it wasn't hard to feel, was it? And Riley was sad because she was missing home, and they had moved somewhere else. And we saw sadness take over Riley's brain and redirect her to let her sadness out, and it even became a beautiful memory. And she was fortunately lovingly held by her parents in a memory she will never forget. That love, for a moment, held us all. That's what we need when we have the blues. That's what we need when we are grieving. Grieving the loss of friends or family members, the loss of a partnership or marriage, the loss of your home, like Riley, the loss of a job, the loss of your physical health, which goes in bits and drabs as we age and can bring us a chronic condition. That loving kindness is also what we need when we suffer from any form of mental illness, which can run the spectrum from a temporary depression to chronic depression, can include learning disabilities such as autism to bipolar disorder or schizophrenia or borderline personality and addictions, such as alcoholism and drug abuse. Our mental health also runs a spectrum that changes over time, and all of us will feel the blues and probably have depression at some time in our life. I have had postpartum and postoperative depression myself, and as we know from our candles of community today and each Sunday, that there are many forms of sadness and many struggles as Brenda said, among us. I say almost every Sunday that our candles are part of weaving the fabric of our faith community. For real community is created through the real sharing of our lives, the joyful along with the sorrowful. And then the religious community is lived out as people reach out to one another after the service or during fellowship. All of our hearts grow as we expand our capacity to offer compassion and kindness. And then those, and those among us who need to be emotionally held, when we do that, they have a few moments of respite. For the past six years, our church has offered a spiritual support group called Living Well with Mental Illness Issues and it is always open to new people. Deep sharing is possible in this group for everyone maintains the boundary of double confidentiality, which means that no one, including the minister, asks later how you're doing or about something said in the group or tells anyone's story outside the group. It's held so well that you're only invited personally by me through a blind copy, so you do not know who is in that group. Creating trust and protecting the precious safety needed for difficult stories is what we're doing. And this year, our Justice League has adopted mental illness as one of our two calls for justice, the other being racial justice, with this month's theme being mental wellness. And there will be a variety of programs throughout the year touching this issue. As the British Royal College, College of Psychiatrists says, you can judge a civilization by the way it treats its mentally ill. My colleague, the Reverend Barbara Myers, who has suffered from depression and who specializes in ministering to those who have any kind of mental illness, says that churches can be places that walk alongside all of the health professionals and educators to provide a community that fills in the gaps for those who suffer. Which as you listen, understand that that means all of us. For genuine, real community creates hope and understanding that when we walk together, we each take our turns at needing some light in our lives and we take our turns at offering that light. Spiritual support and community also brings empowerment to people who suffer so that they can make changes in their lives and learn to cope. This empowerment comes 
because everyone is welcome. Everyone can participate. Everyone can participate. And everyone, everyone has gifts to a community. Real conversation and support also allows someone to take responsibility for their lives, acknowledge the setbacks, still be loved, and to continue on the journey. And finally, a community such as Prairie, with all its opportunities for service, deep conversation, justice, and compassion, allows each one of us to develop meaning in our lives. We are all part of something larger than ourselves, and we each grow to the level we find healing and solace here and allow our hearts and souls to stretch. So don't be afraid to let the blues touch your heart and soul. Don't be afraid to cry out loud. Don't be afraid. We welcome your tears here along with your sadness. We welcome your smile, and we acknowledge that inner light of your inherent worth and dignity. So may we be grateful, so grateful, for the joy of being among friends. Amen. <laughs>